Hey, this is Bo Nose for VixenVarsity.com, our review of Gotham Episode 3, titled The Balloon Man. Gotham was a show that, like, when I first heard about it, I was kind of like, well, who really wants to see a show about Jim Gordon? I mean, what is there really to see? I mean, you're going to have a show about Gotham, but no Batman. Like, who wants to see that? I mean, yeah, you had Batman Begins, but it's still Batman. And before he becomes Batman, you get to see the path that he follows. So I don't know how interested I really was in seeing a show about Jim Gordon and pre-Batman Gotham City. Uh, the first three episodes, my opinion has definitely been changed uh, to see how corrupt and how dirty and blighted Gotham City is, you know, before the, before Batman. You know, to see how everyone in the city is corrupt. I mean, the mayor's corrupt, the judges. The police department, everyone is just so corrupt. And now they get to do this like every week they're showing you more and more of the corruption. And you get to see um, all the stuff that Jim Gordon has to overcome you know, before there's a Batman. So I'm definitely, definitely feeling the show. I'm really starting to come around on their plans for the show and what they got going on. Like Fox definitely has a, a plan. You know, sometimes when you watch shows, there's not a plan. There's just, like, you, one episode is one way, the next episode is another way, the next episode is the other way, and then there's nothing, like, coherent with the show. And you can't really, you can't say that at all with Gotham so far. I mean, each episode builds off the previous episode, and you really get a good feeling for what they're trying to do. This episode was called The Blue Man, and it was about a guy who takes it upon himself to punish the corrupt in Gotham. So you get your first taste of vigilantism in Gotham City on the show. The first guy he kills is a guy who basically steals from the people of Gotham as a Ponzi scheme. It's kind of like the Madoff stuff or the Enron thing where you know these people will lose everything. And since Gotham is so corrupt, he's basically going to get away with it. So this guy, so my takes it upon themselves to punish this guy. And what they do is, as a guy, as the Ponzi scheme guy is leaving his place, his house, there's like a, a hot dog vendor. And he offers to sell him a hot dog. The guy's like, oh, get away from me or whatever. And he attaches a weather balloon to his arm and the weather balloon takes the guy up into the sky. And of course, it takes him really high and is gonna kill the guy. So, you know, we, they find out, police find out about it because he's like the camera people, the news is right there outside the guy's house when it happens. And, you know, they, they christen the guy the balloon killer. Well, Gotham City Police, they don't really care because the guy's corrupt and they know he's corrupt. And they're like, well, we're going to investigate, but not really investigate. And of course, it goes against everything Jim Gordon has in him. He's just a good cop. He wants to find out. Who's doing this? And the next victim for the balloon man is a cop. He's a lieutenant. And he's very abusive. He beats people. And the guy goes after him. And the cop kind of fights back. But the guy ends up cooking the balloon up to the cop. The cop goes up into the sky. Now, of course, since it's a cop, and they know he's dirty, and they're all dirty. Now it's become their priority for Gotham City Police. So, because the mayor and the, the lieutenant, the commissioner, everybody's coming down and I'm like, look, you guys gotta figure out who's doing this. So now Bullock beats the streets, goes through all his, everyone he knows, and really goes hard trying to figure out who's doing it. They finally get a lead from a guy who sells weather balloons. He's like, oh, I'm a four, and this ex employee of mine is the one who stole them. So they track the non sex employee, they break in, it was pretty funny, because they break in, they, they bust into the dude's apartment, they find him, and he's with his girlfriend, I guess, and it's a big black chick, and she commits to whip Bullock's tail. Gordon gets catches the guy, cuffs him, and the chick is about to throw a TV screen on Bullock's face, and Gordon has to save Bullock, which is kind of funny, because, you know, Bullock's so dirty, and Gordon has to save him. 
So it was a pretty funny scene. And this their interaction with each other is, is kind of interesting between Bullock and Gordon. So the question to the guy, and the guy like kind of tells him, well, I never saw the guy who I sold the balloons to. And it's not me that's killing these people. Why well, he's saying it, of course, another person gets caught with the balloon. It's a, it's a pastor. I mean, not a pastor. It's a, it's a priest, Catholic priest. And so then they know it's not him. So then they're still trying to figure it out who's doing it. And then he tells them, though, know, when the balloon goes up high, it pops because of the stratosphere. They freeze, the helium expands, and the balloon pop. Well, of course, then they say that. That's when the cop falls from the sky. The dead cop falls from the sky. And he lands on a little old lady and kills her. So when they get there, they find some evidence on him from when he got in the scuffle with the balloon man killer. And they come to find out they figure out where he is because he had had a form that Gordon had signed earlier because Gordon had took in uh, Selena Kyle into his custody so he could figure out who killed the Wayans. So when he had that form, he knew it was the social worker who he got Selena Kyle from. They tracked this guy down to where the old welfare building was. And the guy gets a dropping bullet. I don't even know how. I mean, they both came in with guns, guns drawn, but somehow they he gets a bullet, which is kind of weak. But he gets a bullet. Um, Gordon tries to toss him down. It doesn't work. And then bullet attaches the balloon, the weather balloon, to the guy. It's about to take off. Gordon stops it. He jumps on the guy and then tells bullet to shoot it. He bullet wouldn't have shot out the balloon if it hadn't been for Gordon being on the guy. So, you know, they stop him, and Gordon has to, you know, they, they catch the guy. And so it was just kind of like weird to see, you know, the early vigilante in Gotham. And they show Bruce, who hadn't been eating, he sees this, and he's almost like, hmm. Huh. And almost like a, you can see, like, the spark of inspiration a little bit. And then he starts eating it again. So we're not sure where this is going to lead to, but he, I mean, we know where it's going to lead to. That's like the one thing about the show where the prequels, you always, you already know the end. So none of this tell you the beginning. And so you know where it's going to go. It was just interesting to see how each week so far, they give me like a bite of Bruce. They give you just a little bit, not too, not too much. And the episode isn't about him. Each episode, he's just two scenes. It ran to maybe five minutes of, of screen time, and it's like just enough where you see the growth of Bruce Wayne. You don't just you you, you real you come to real, see and realize that he becomes Batman not just because of his parents' death, but just of how bad Gotham City is overall. So you have that, and you have a little bit of Selena Kyle, who really just shows Gordon where the death happened, where the Wayne's were shot which the ERA knows and gives him proof that she was there and then she can identify the shooter and then she tr tricks Gordon and picks a lock and gets away. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, one of the, another really interesting story is the whole Fish Mooney, Falcone and the, all the mob stuff that's going on in the city. Like Fish Mooney is really playing like a dangerous game. Like she kind of snitches on Gordon to Renee Montoya and Christmas Allen about him killing um, Cobblepot, Oswald Cobblepot. And, and then she also has Falcone's girl, lover killed. And Falcone kind of knows it's her that does it, but at the same time, he can't prove it yet. And it's just a weird interaction between the two of them. So you have that going on. And then you have other mobsters who are hinting that they're ready to take out Falcone and they keep missing Arkham Asylum. Like this, this is the second episode now where something big is about to happen to Arkham. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens there, what they're going to do with Arkham and how this leads into it becoming the asylum where they keep the crazies later on in Batman's career. My favorite character so far, the scene stealer almost every week, 
so far as an Alba Cabo pot. That he you get the really the foundation of who the penguin is. You get Oswald, the conniving, the slick, but the brutality that is there. I mean, people don't really think of of how brutal the penguin is, but I in Batman Returns and the cartoons and the comic books and now on the show, you really get to see how brutal Oswald Cobblepot can be. But you also see how smart he is and how observing he is and how he really learns how to play play the cards that he's dealt and really turn a losing hand into a winning hand. This was another episode where, where he a guy gets a drop on him and the guy's going to turn back in to Falcone or Fish Mooney and Cobblepot slices the guy's ankle and kills him and steals from the guy. And then you have Cobblepot looking for a job, of course, in a different section of the town. And they tell him, oh, we're not going to hire you. You don't even have the right kind of shoes. And then he sees one of the workers and he kills the guy after the guy gets off work, takes his shoes. And then Oswald gets the guy's job because now, of course, they have an opening because the guy's dead. So, and then he listens in on the conversation. And even though they know he heard him, he's like, no, I didn't hear nothing. So he really does well with playing the information. And, and you see the conniving of the penguin at an early stage. Um, and then at the end of the episode, he like pops up on Gordon's door, even though Gordon supposedly shot him at the beginning of the first episode, at the end of the first episode, and told him to disappear, don't ever come back to Gotham. Well, here's God will call about back in Gotham and back on Gordon's uh, doorstep, which could lead to Gordon's death because he's supposed to have killed him. So it's gonna be interesting next week to see how that all plays out. The one storyline that I'm not really feeling, and I, I guess I, I get it because you always have like this love story, love triangle on shows, you know, for the, I don't know why, but you just gotta always have, have the love stuff, is I really don't get the relationship between Renee Montoya, Barbara King, and Jim Gordon. Like, why is it necessary? Uh, okay, I get it. Barbara King and, Bar and Renee Montoya used to be lovers. And you know, Montoya's jealous and she went to take Gordon down. But it's like, the whole police department was dirty. Yeah, you're concentrating all your efforts on this one guy who's... All, I mean, he's supposed to kill the guy. But other than that, he's there's nothing that you have on him. Yet here you are trying to take him down when the whole police department's dirty. And it's really because you're jealous that he's with your ex-girlfriend. And then you come to find out that you and your ex-girlfriend were getting high together and you were always lying to her, but yet you want to take her back. It's like, you weren't even good for her. So what's the point? And you can see how they've changed Barbara King. They've kind of combined Barbara King, Jim Gordon's wife in the comics to Catherine Kane, who is fat woman in the comics and who's also Renee Montoya's lover in the comics or former lover in the comics. So it's kind of like they create, they've combined those two characters, which is cool. I mean, they've done it on other shows. They've combined characters and, you know, renamed them and redid stuff. And it's a different universe and it's a different thing. So I'm fine with it. It's whatever. But at the same time, it's like, why are you like forcing this love triangle stuff? on us like you can just have the relationship of Gordon and King building and like show the struggles of him be trying to be a good cop and be a good boyfriend be a good fiance be a good you know future husband to her and like why they end up breaking up because he can't find that balance and you know you just concentrate on that you just have Montoya and Chris Allen be good cops and really trying to bring down the bad cops in the Gotham City PD and show them to be future allies for Gordon. But like right now, they're not. And I also understand that dynamic when Gordon's like basically by himself in the whole Gotham City PD. So, but other than that, I really, really like Gotham. I really enjoyed this episode. You know, I gave it two thumbs up. It's a really good show. It's a must watch show. I mean, if you're not watching it, you definitely got to be DVR. You got to be watching on Fox now on 
you, you just gotta watch it. I mean, it's only three episodes in. If you haven't caught an episode yet, it's easy to catch up. And uh, it's definitely a must-watch show. So if you have any interest in Batman whatsoever, or in that Batman universe, I should say, whatsoever. It's really a must-watch show. All right, it's